very um, descriptive. So Thrasymachus is coming with a completely different position than what we've seen um, so far. Polemicus and uh, Socrates have thought that justice is a virtue. Thrasymachus comes in with this um, completely different view. Justice is being exploited. It is not a virtue. It is a vice. Um, and um, because justice is purely conventional, and the conventions have been put in place by the stronger. So Socrates now raises a criticism of Thrasymachus, which is really interesting and really important, and kind of a standard criticism um, of this kind of argument when you run into it. He could have said, well, you didn't define advantage either, right? <laughs> Notice that Thrasymachus didn't actually define advantage, right? Um, he didn't do exactly what it is that he just criticized Socrates of doing. That would have been um, uh, both a good objection and, and also a good zinger, because of course he would bring the same uh, <coughs> objection against him that was just leveled against himself. But that's not what he does. I think that would take the, description, the, um, the conversation off track. What Socrates points out is that, well, for Simicus, you're using justice as this purely descriptive term. What it is that societies happen to actually believe to be good. Or what the rules are in given society. But those laws are not necessarily put in place for the advantage of the stronger. They're put in place for the perceived advantage of the stronger. So the, the strong don't put into place rules that are always going to be for their advantage. The stronger put into place rules that they think are going to be for the sake of their advantage. But rulers make mistakes. Rulers make mistakes. And because rulers make mistakes, you can't say that justice is the advantage of the strong. <laughs> so, Thrasymachus has kind of got himself a little bit caught. He's got, this he's got this purely descriptive meaning of justice, that is what society actually happens to believe, and he's also got um, this, um, uh, this claim that it's for the advantage of the stronger. The problem is sometimes, just as a matter of fact, as a matter of description, the rulers make mistakes about what is actually to their advantage. So it looks like Thrasymachus is in trouble, right? It looks like he's got a serious problem. He's given, he's given a definition and there seems to be something wrong with it. And here we have an interesting kind of moment because Polemarchus and Clitophon, at this point, come in and try to help. They try to help Thrasymachus out. And they try to help him out in what I think would be the obvious way to help out Thrasymachus' <laughs> definition. Because Socrates is right that leaders make mistakes. And because leaders make mistakes, therefore, the definition of justice should be just what people think is in their best interest. So we'll change it. We'll change the definition. Justice will be the perceived advantage of the strong. That's the Polemarchus and Clitophon bring in that definition. This isn't, this isn't Thrasymachus. So Polemarchus and Clitophon say, shouldn't it be then that justice is the perceived advantage of the stronger? That enables us to have a perfectly descriptive use of the term justice. It's not normative. It just tells you what is going on in a society. It is law-abidingness is the advantage of what, or rather, the law-abidingness, justice, is what the lawmakers perceive to have been in their advantage, to their advantage. Justice is the perceived advantage of the strong. So that seems like a reasonable way out for Thrasymachus. 
It does. And it seems like a reasonable way out. You can say, yeah, it's perceived advantage of the stronger. I would, should have added that word. You're right. Still not a virtue, right? <laughs> to be law abiding to someone else's um, uh, attempts to oppress you. You're still a sucker. Uh, the person, you know, who's who's oppressing you or exploiting you might be making mistakes, but it's still not a virtue to follow it. You might expect that Thrasymachus would say that. That's an option for him. But that's not what Thrasymachus says. <coughs> Thrasymachus rejects this alteration of the position. And he makes a very important and very interesting distinction um, about it within crafts. And this distinction is between what I might call, what I'll, I'll call, dividing professions from crafts. So, on the one hand, let's say that we have um, uh, physicians. Right? On the one hand, you have the profession. That is, people that we identify or normally consider physicians, MDs, people with MD after the name. They're doctors. That's one definition of doctor, the profession. That's not the definition that Thrasymachus wants to use. There's a stricter definition. And the stricter definition is people who have the medical craft. So insofar as you know how to heal, you are a doctor. Insofar as you do not know how to heal, you are not a doctor. Whether how many letters you have after your name, or whether you've gone to school, or whatever, doesn't matter. The definition of doctor in this stricter sense is not the profession, but the craftsperson, the person who has the knowledge <coughs> that gives them the power to produce the product. So he wants to divide up these two. There's the loose sense, the profession, the doctor profession, and then there's the strict sense, the craftsperson, the person who has the knowledge. So, a physician, or a, a, a professional doctor, a person with an MD, can make mistakes. They are recognized as having the medical craft, but they can make errors. Because um, it's more of a social institution, the uh, profession of doctors. <coughs> But, strictly speaking, a doctor, a craftsperson, can never make a mistake. Why can a doctor, strictly speaking, never make a mistake? Well, the craft is knowing how to restore health, produce health. When you make a mistake, you make a mistake because you lack the knowledge of how to cure. That's what a mistake is. Otherwise, it wouldn't be a mistake. Right? So, you know, a, a, the craft of medicine is knowing how to cure. Therefore, when you make a mistake, you lack some knowledge of how to cure. So the point of this definition is you have the medical craft exactly in so far as you are able to cure. And you are a doctor exactly in so far as you are able to cure. Conversely, exactly in so far as you are unable to cure, you are not a doctor. So therefore, a doctor, in the professional sense, only makes a mistake insofar as they are not a doctor, in the strict sense. Because you only make mistakes insofar as you lack the knowledge, and you only lack the knowledge insofar, uh, and, and insofar as you lack the knowledge.